Good evening, God's family. Welcome to our celebration of Tenebrae. A little bit with a difference, I think, but I am so grateful that you are willing to participate in this service as we remember Jesus before his crucifixion. I want to suggest that at home we light candles as we see there are nine candles and nine readings. The first eight readings is about the journey of Jesus towards the cross and the last one is the light that shines into the darkness. So when the darkness of the cross falls upon him, then at the end we light a candle again that reminds us that the light shines into the darkness. We remember a resurrection. I trust that you will gather as a family at your table. Should you want to be have candles ready to light and extinguish at different times, please be careful. Please be careful when we do that as you gather around the table. On this night, we remember that our Lord Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and showed that he had come to be a servant as we read in the gospel. On that last evening that he spent with his disciples, Jesus shared the Passover meal. He was betrayed by one of his disciples and there was an advancing darkness engulfing him by the hatred of his enemies. The shadow of the cross was looming ahead of him. But there was a prophecy of Jesus that after three days Easter would dawn and Christ would rise from the grave. Our first reading is a reading from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 to 12. It is about the prophecy of the suffering servant. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he done, had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and, that, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. We're reading from John chapter 13, verses 31 to 38. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, 
then God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself, and he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Now we read from Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 32 to 42, Jesus in Gethsemane. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise! Let's go! Here comes my betrayal. The Arrest of Jesus, Luke chapter 22, verses 47 to 53. Jesus was still speaking when a crowd arrived, led by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. He came up to Judas to kiss him, but Jesus said, Judas, is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man? When the disciples who were with Jesus saw what was going to happen, they asked, Shall we use our swords, Lord? And one of them struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, Enough of this! He touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come there to get him, Did you have to come with swords and clubs as though I were an outlaw? I was with you in the temple every day, and you did not try to arrest me. But this is your hour to act when the power of darkness rules. Jesus before the Sanhedrin, Matthew 26, verse 57 to 67. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law the elders and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you going to, are you going to answer? What is this testimony 
that these men are bringing against you. But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now we have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? Peter disowns Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 to 75. Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard when one of the high priest's servants' girls came to him and said, you too were with the Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it in front of them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he answered, and went on, went on out to the entrance of the courtyard. Another servant girl saw him and said to the men there, he was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it and answered, I swear I don't know that man. After a little while, the men standing there came to Peter. Of course you are one of them, they said. After all, the way you speak gives you away. Then Peter said, I swear that I am telling the truth. May God punish me if I am not. I do not know that man. Just then, a cock crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had told him. Before the cock crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. He went out and wept bitterly. The soldiers mocked Jesus, Matthew 27, verse 27 to 31. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Jesus before Pilate and Herod. Luke chapter 23, verses 13 to 25. Pilate called together the chief priests and leaders and the people and said to them, you brought this man to me and said that he was misleading the people. Now I have examined him here in your presence and I have not found him guilty of any of the crimes you accuse him of. Nor did Herod find him guilty for he sent him back to us. There is nothing this man has done to deserve death so I will have him whipped and let him go. The whole crowd cried out, kill him, set Barabbas free for us. Barabbas had been put in prison for a riot that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, so he appealed to the crowd again, but they shouted back, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them the third time, but what crime has he committed? I cannot find that he has done anything to deserve death. I will have him whipped and set him free. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices that Jesus should be crucified. And finally their shouting su succeeded. So Pilate passed the sentence on Jesus that they were asking for. 
He set free the man they wanted, the one who had been put in prison for riot and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them to do as they wished. The light of God, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, without Him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. As we conclude, let me just express a sincere word of thanks to Yano, who has made the sacrifice of his time for today, and to Jackie, who came in to do the readings with me. Thank you very much to both of you. And then also to say to those of us who will follow the readings at home, we have read from two versions of the scriptures. I read from the NIV, and Jackie read from the Good News Bible. So feel free to read from the version that you find is most appropriate for yourself. May God bless you and may God lead you through this night until we meet again tomorrow at 12. God bless. Thanks. <laughs>